Hey guys, so FPS Aim Trainer is coming to Steam in just a little over a week, and I'm very excited for it. So many cool things that I've gotten a chance to add, and I'm very happy to say that Steam integration is officially here, and I just kind of wanted to show some of the new user interface type stuff, and hopefully give people a better idea of what to expect whenever they buy the game. So first off, standard FPS Aim Trainer stuff, everything is driven by profiles. So this bot, the way he's dodging, is entirely driven by a profile, his uh, character is, you know, the weapons that he's not using. So the weapons I'm using, driven by profiles, all that stuff. They're all packaged into scenarios. So I have local files in Steam Workshop. These are actually live on the Steam Workshop now. Mouse over them, it gives you, you know, the description of what game you can expect it to be like, uh, who made it, difficulty roughly, description. We've got all this sorts of stuff here. This little blank row is going to be filled in with the ratings of things on Steam once we have enough people who actually vote on it. Uh, this will be leaderboards whenever I get to that. Leaderboards is not going to be with the game on launch, but it is planned for later. And this button downloads a local copy. So you can just click on the play button here, and go to this one, and play it as a challenge, which is a timed and scored thing. So based on how you do, in this case for every three damage I do, it'll give me a point. And then the final score that I get is multiplied by my effectively accuracy. So I can click challenge, it'll give me 60 seconds. You can see how I do here. And I'm not going to play the full thing, but just the basic idea is, you know, you practice your aim by doing this sort of thing. You can also, instead of doing it as a challenge, play it as free play. Whenever you click free play, this new game manager pops up over here. So this lets me, if there were more characters to play as in this scenario, I could change what I am, I can change what the bot is. If there were more characters, I can add more bots. So I can go like that, I can hit play. We have two bots now. And you can change the teams they're on. So this actually put it on white, which means he could have spawned on my side as well. I'm just gonna make sure he stays there. But you can also delete them just like that. You can sit if they're invincible, if you just wanna keep shooting and not worry about them dying and having to respawn. Um, you can change the map, and there are a wide number of maps that uh, launch with it, but anytime you play something from the Steam Workshop that's a map that you've not played before, it'll download it and stuff it in this map selection here. So as you play more, you'll actually get more maps. Not that it's planned to be like an unlock thing, that's just how it works. Um, so that's free play, and it's a little bit more freeform because, you know, if you don't want to play this map that's usually included on this, then you can go to, like, Ascension. In this case you'd actually want to switch teams with the bot like that i'm in the center and now i can aim at something like this so pretty simple um and then under local files so i left the steam workshop say i downloaded one of these scenarios and i click here and it's cached so it goes quickly for me i just downloaded this one and as you can see it's got pretty much the same type of stuff that it does in the steam workshop but in addition uh, there is an edit button and an upload button. So if you look at the upload button, there are a couple different things that are happening here. This one's grayed out because I just downloaded it. I just downloaded it. I'm the owner of this. I have it on the Steam Workshop already. So uploading it doesn't make sense because the file that I have is the same as on the Workshop. But if I go to edit this, it's going to say, okay, would you like to unpack? And that is basically the unzipping. So I click yes to unpack. I highly recommend you do that if you're not sure what you're doing. And then here's the scenario I'm working on. And then this says I can play as this guy, the bot can play as this guy. If I go to the challenge tab, then you're gonna see it's this Kata IC FPS map, which is the map that I was playing on earlier. And you know, it's all very simple stuff like this that you can just use to define it. But if you wanna go and edit the actual stuff, like you know what makes up the scenario, then it's all this stuff up here. So what I could do is go to the Quaker profile and I could, add a weapon. I can go rocket launcher. Now they have a rocket launcher in there as well. And you know I can change different movement properties, acceleration, run speed, gravity, all this fun stuff, bounding box, different sizes. And you might have noticed there's only one character listed here. That's because the player uses the same character as the bot. You might look at this and say, wait, the player is the Quaker, the bot is the Quaker bot long strafes. That's under the bot section. You click on this, it says, ah, it's using the same character profile as the player. It's just whenever a bot is something, it picks the character profile and then tells it what dodging profiles to use and how to aim with different weapons. So bots will refer to the character profile. 
So I've made a change there and say I wasn't sure I wanted to do it, and I click cancel. Nicely little uh, added message here that says, hey, you modified something, but it wasn't saved to a scenario. So if I don't click save, the changes I made to the character of adding that rocket launcher are not going to be saved. In this case, I'm actually going to cancel because I don't want to do that right now. Uh, a change that I did want to make is under this Catalyst IC scenario. So let me grab the latest version of that. I see. Oh, I'll play. Download it. All right, so Catalyst I see. I'm going to edit this. Unpacked everything. And currently, uh, you know what, let me just play it and show you what it is. So there's this bot. He shoots at you, and you don't take damage, but if I look at the menus here under scoring, for every one point of damage I do, I gain three score. For every one point of damage I take, I lose one. So, although I'm invincible, I lose score for being hit. And uh, somebody suggested that we change this. Sorry, I should have clicked cancel there. Habit. Somebody suggested that we change this so the bot only uses rocket launcher, but we make a version of the rocket launcher that does not have knockback. So, I like that idea. I'm going to go here, I'm going to get rid of knockback under the effects tab, go back here and save as, I'm going to call it rocket launcher no knockback. I'm going to make a copy of this Quaker, and I'm going to change it so he uses rocket launcher no knockback. I'm going to get rid of this weapon so he doesn't use the lightning gun. I'm going to save this character as Quaker uh, RL no KB. As. So now it's in this list, I go to the bots, and I have three different bots because they have different dodging profiles and different aiming profiles. And, you know, I, we could change those, but not worth messing around right now. So, quick RL, no knockback, save that. I'm going to do the same here, and do the same here. So, I've saved those three bot profiles to use this character that uses this weapon. And then I look at the list of bots that can be here, these are correct, I go to the challenge, it's set to use the hard bot specifically. So if I played free play, I could change this to the other bots. But in this case, I'm just doing it as, uh, for the challenge as the hard bot. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bump up this damage taken. So for every rocket direct you eat to the face, it'll be three times the damage, which I think is 100, might be 120. Take a look. Uh, yeah, the damage per shot is 120, and the explosive blast radius at the center is 120 as well. So, I'm going to save that, because we actually do want to make this change. I've made the change, and then I have the Catalyst IC scenario. It was grayed out before, just like this long stripes one, but now it says the version of Catalyst IC that I have on the workshop is different than the local copy. So I click it. And it reminds me, make sure you put tags in the scenario description so that people know what to expect. And I already had tags there, so I'm just going to say, change note, removed LG from bot, gave bot RL with no knockback. And this will actually show up in the Steam Workshop profile uh, item for the Catalyst IC. So I click update, it'll upload it, and then it says in a couple minutes it'll be live. That's all is actually going to Steam, and the next time that somebody plays this, the Catalyst I see, it'll actually have the latest version, and it will see if it's accurate to now. Yep, looks like it went live faster than I expected. That's cool. So you have this scenario where you have to shoot a bot, he's kind of hard to hit, and he's also shooting at you, and if he hits you, you lose score. So that's how easy it is to change scenarios and make your own stuff. And hypothetically, um, just looking on the, this list, you see that there are some that are not, like they don't have arrows here. This means I do not own this content. So somebody else made this pair, uh, profile, the scenario, they uploaded it to the workshop, and I downloaded it, but they have control over it. I do not. So I can't actually upload to overwrite their stuff. But if I really wanted to, like I could take... Uh, this, pick the Overwatch long stripes profile. I edit it, unpack it. I can do three long stripes cove. Save as. 
So now it tells me this is not on the workshop. I can click here and upload it. So that's how easy it is to take what somebody else made and then just make changes to it, send it up to the workshop. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with this because this is just what, uh, I don't know, four or five of us have tossed on the workshop in a week. Uh, granted, some of these scenarios were made beforehand, but I'd like to think that right now the uh, abilities of editing stuff and uploading to the workshop are in a pretty good place. It seems very functional, and I hope it makes sense to you guys. So uh, let me know what you think. You know, Does this seem cool? Are you excited for it? I sure am. I really can't wait to see what people are going to make and put on the workshop now. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the game whenever it comes out. Thanks. Have a good one.